No. I don't see the clock. There it is. Hello there, YouTubers. This is Gus Astasio from Healing X Outreach. Um, our program, you can see the archives at www.blogtalkradio.com backslash Healing X Outreach. And uh, this Sunday, we have a debate with uh, a Jesus mythicist and atheist John Loftus, who um, was actually taught by William Lane Craig, uh, mentored by him. And um, William Lane Craig, of course, is not an atheist. And he's going to be debating on the issue of the resurrection, whether it's mythical or historical, versus uh, Catholic William Alvarez from the Catholic Gate. Uh, this is twice in one week. I'm, I'm doing a, another video, and I'm going to try to be a little more prolific about making videos. Uh, this Sunday, I talked about Palm Sunday. I talked about the Russian ban. Um, I said that, uh, of course, I, I'm for a ban on any group that presents a clear and present danger to the public that aids and abets criminals and that denies uh, the problem of crime that exists within their ranks. Uh, I'm for, of course, religious freedom if a religion is acting religiously, <laughs> not in a terrorist fashion. And, uh, and of course, my position is that the cults are, they appear nice outwardly, or as, as the Bible says, the devil appears as an angel of light at times, but he's still the devil. <laughs> if you really just to see the devil show his true character, he would not uh, appear so beautiful to you. And uh, the cults really hide um, people that are deceived. Uh, they are outwardly beautiful, but uh, as the Bible says, they have the appearance of godliness, but proving false to its power. Now, here is an example of proving false to its power. This annual event that the Jehovah's Witnesses call the Memorial of Jesus Christ's death. And uh, I call it the annual Say No to Jesus campaign of Jehovah's Witnesses, where millions of people say no to Jesus' body and blood, to, to the bread and wine that Jesus instituted for all who believe in him, without exclusion, no second-class citizens. But there is an entire theology that promotes a second-class citizenship amongst the Jehovah's Witness ranks, uh, where there are people that are in the New Covenant and those that are just beneficiaries of the New Covenant through association of those that are in the New Covenant. It is really a multilateral, multiple mediatorship uh, where those beneficiaries of the New Covenant have mediators that are not Jesus Christ, but their whole salvation is based upon their relationship with those that claim to have Jesus Christ as their mediator. And if you don't believe me, let me, let me accurately portray their beliefs by quoting some of their literature. And uh, some of this stuff I actually agree with. Some of it, okay. So let's first begin with the New Covenant, all right? The specific provision of the New Covenant. And I agree with the Watchtower Society and Jehovah's Witnesses that are educated, of course, on their doctrine because many Jehovah's Witnesses are absolutely ignorant and do not know that Jesus is not their mediator according to their teachings. Uh, the 1980 Watchtower, November 1st, page 31 says, as this of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses Je uh, of the New Covenant. It says, Jehovah provided Jesus Christ as the perfect sacrifice to take away sins. I agree with that. This specific provision of the New Covenant. This is a specific provision of the New Covenant. So the New Covenant's specific provision is to take away sins. And I agree with that because the Bible also agrees with that. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 37, 27 through 38, it states that the forgiveness of sins comes from the new covenant. Also, he took a cup and having given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink out of it, all of you. There was no one refusing the drink offering at the table. Not even Judas. Now we remember Jesus prophesies Judas being the betrayer by him dipping his bread into the cup with his hand. So Judas was present at that last supper. He says, drink out of it, all of you, for this means my blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out in behalf of many for forgiveness of sins. So this is not a small number, many, and it is for all who drink of that cup. This is all of you present. In fact, there is no instance in the New Testament where believers refuse the cup and refuse the bread. And they broke bread many, many times together. There were no constituency of second-class citizens, not part of the New Covenant in the first century. There were not people who, in the Christian congregations, in the second century, after the apostles died, that refused to partake in the New Covenant. Unless 
they were not part of the new covenant. So here we have, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says that these ones are partakers of the new covenant, all of them. We agree that the new covenant is a specific provision for salvation for those who partake. Now, this is the other Watchtower teaching. So who are the partakers of the new covenant? Well, of course, all those who have Jesus as their mediator. But this is the issue of the memorial. The memorial is to decipher who is Jesus going to be the mediator over. Because Jehovah's Witnesses, that is, their leadership teaches that Jesus is not the mediator for all Jehovah's Witnesses, nor for all who believe in Jesus Christ. They're teaching it specifically. The 1979 Watchtower, April 1st, page 31 says, so in this strict biblical sense, Jesus is the mediator only for anointed Christians. Of course, they believe that is only 144,000. In the Worldwide Security Under the Prince of Peace, uh, 1986 edition, pages 10 through 11, it says, likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. He is the mediator between his heavenly father, Jehovah God, and the nation of spiritual Israel, which is limited to only 144,000 members. So here they claim Jesus is not the mediator for all only for a specific small group of 144,000. And yet in the first century, no one ever refused to partake of that cup. No one ever refused to partake of what they call the memorial emblems. All who sat at the table in the Christian congregations ate of the bread and drank of the wine. In fact, some drank of it and ate of it unworthily in sin and they fell asleep in death, 1 Corinthians 11 says, and some got sick. Um, here, in the Insight on the Scriptures, Volume 2, page 362, under the topic of Mediator, it reads, He mediates the new covenant between God and those taken into the new covenant. The congregation of spiritual Israel, the total number of those who finally and permanently sealed is revealed in Revelation chapter 7, verses 4 through 8, as 144,000. In the 1991 Watchtower edition, page uh, 18, February 15th edition, Christ does not act as mediator of the new covenant toward them. Speaking of the great crowd and most of Jehovah's Witnesses, yet they benefit from this covenant through the work of God's kingdom. Christ still acts towards them, however, as high priest to whom Jehovah can and does apply the ransom to the extent of their now being declared righteous as God's friends. Now, how is it can the new covenant apply towards those who they admit is not part of the new covenant? How can you benefit from the new covenant when they have already stated you are not part of the new covenant? Once again, Jehovah provided Jesus Christ as the perfect sacrifice to take away sins. This is the specific provision of the new covenant. How can you be saved through the new covenant if you are not partakers of the new covenant? Um, and yet the memorial is exactly an example of that. Now. The last 10 years, there have been increases of partakers at the memorial, from 8,000 to 18,000. But you still have somewhat around 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses not partaking of the New Covenant, not partaking of that bread, not partaking of that wine past of the memorial emblems. Um, Watchtower 1979, April 1st, page 31 says, how is it that the majority of Jehovah's Witnesses that are not part of the New Covenant are beneficiaries or recipients of the blessings of the New Covenant. It's because they have a new mediator. It's not Jesus Christ. The great crowd of other sheep that is forming today is not that New Covenant, is not in that New Covenant. However, by their associating with the little flock of those yet in the New Covenant, they come with their benefits that flow from that New Covenant. By associating with those in the New Covenant, what does that make this anointed remnant? You know, we got to remember the, the term anointed means Christ, the anointed class. They at one time called themselves the Christ class. Well, how fitting is it that this anointed class, this a Christ class, takes on a Christ role? Because the only way these people that are passing this cup tonight, passing this plate of bread tonight, according to their theology, will be beneficiaries of that cup, beneficiaries of that bread, 
even though they do not partake of it. They literally say, no, Jesus, I don't want your blood. No, Jesus, I want no parts of your body. I am not in that new covenant, of which salvation is the specific purpose of it. They pass the cup. They pass salvation, pass their noses. Why? Because their leaders teach them that we're your mediator, the anointed, the Christ class, the anointed class. That 18,000 that are partaking are your mediators, or maybe just the governing body, whoever they say happens to fit the application of the faithful and discreet slave, the faithful anointed class, whoever it is. At one time it was the partakers of the memorial, sometimes it's the governing body. They are your mediators. All that matters is the man, Jesus Christ, is no longer your one and true mediator. Other people have become your mediators, have been replaced. Uh, the 1979 Watchtower, November 15th, page 27, reads as so. They recognize, that is the great crowd, that is uh, most uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses recognize, they are not spiritual Israelites in the New Covenant, mediated by Jesus Christ. Did you realize that, Jehovah's Witnesses? That you're not in the New Covenant? You're not mediated by Jesus Christ? Nor part of the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation? Yet they do benefit from the operation of the new covenant. They benefit from this just as in ancient Israel, the alien resident benefited from residing in among the Israelites who were in the law covenant. To keep in relationship with our savior God, the great crowd needs to remain united with the remnant of spiritual Israel. And ironically, this article is entitled benefiting from one mediator between God and men. Let me say something, the alien residents were part of Israel. They were citizens. They were not second-class citizens. You were either part of Israel or you weren't. In fact, alien residents who came to be part of Israel had to receive the same covenant uh, that was passed through Noah, through Moses, through circumcision. That's why Dinah, when she was violated by another nation, her brothers made them have circumcision so that she could be married rightfully to them to the to the man that violated her circumcision was the the symbol of that covenant the shedding of blood through circumcision so the alien resident is a poor example the alien resident was israel in the days of moses the egyptians that came under the umbrella of israel were citizens of israel they were no longer egypt they were israelites john 1 12 and, and, and this is an example. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that, that this new covenant, of which we're beneficiaries of, through his blood, because we are partakers of that new covenant, is not limited to a select number. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, But as many as received them, some translation says, But to all who received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So, Everyone, all and as many as received Jesus Christ, have the power to become sons of God. Not a limited number. John chapter 6, verses 50 through 58 reads this. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat then and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves saying, how can this man give his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Very, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Job's witness says, are you passing that bread? Are you passing that wine? Jesus says, you have no life in you unless you're partaking of that bread, of my flesh and my blood. The new covenant. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Want to be raised up on the last day? If you die, you will have resurrection by partaking in that new covenant. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Do you dwell in Jesus? If you don't dwell in Jesus, you have no part in that new covenant. And the specific provision of that new covenant is salvation, life eternal, dwelling with Christ. Luke 22:20 20 
Jesus, uh, the, the Gospel of Luke writes, in the same way after supper he took 